Hello, my name is Irina and I'm a product manager here at Convergent. Today, I will give you a demo of Convert Enterprise Cloud, which is the latest addition to the Convert product family. Together, we will take a look at how you can convert a part of your existing virtualized infrastructure into a private cloud, integrate with Amazon EC2 for external capacity, provision new virtual data centers, and much, much more. For those of you who are existing Convert Enterprise users, this screen will look very familiar. In fact, you will be glad to know that Convert Enterprise Cloud includes all of the features of Convert Enterprise and of course the new and exciting cloud features that we'll be talking about for the rest of this demo. One thing that I'd like to note that I'm currently logged in as the cloud administrator, which is the, really the super user in the system. And then later in the demo, we will see what the self-service cloud user console looks like. As we look in the top, uh, on the left navigator pane, the top part looks exactly like Convert Enterprise, and you can see the data center, server pools, and templates. And there are two new co categories, IAS and Virtual Data Centers. IAS stands for Infrastructure as a Service and denotes the infrastructure used to host your cloud. Virtual Data Centers are a quick and convenient way to provision new clients and give them self-service capabilities without, of course, exposing any of the underlying physical infrastructure. If we take a look at the IAS, Convert provides a variety of external options for your cloud infrastructure. You can integrate with Amazon EC2 for uh, public cloud capacity, or if you've chosen a cloud infrastructure provider such as Eucalyptus or OpenStack, you can bring those into Convert as well and centrally manage them. For the purposes of this demo, I've configured all three of these just to show the, you that you can do this, but of course you'll probably have a smaller subset of these in your environment, if at all. Now let us get into the most exciting feature of the Convert Enterprise Cloud release is what we call the Virtualized to Cloud Conversion. What it allows you to do, it allows you to quickly convert part of your existing virtualized infrastructure into a private cloud with just a few sim simple clicks. You don't need to do any extra configuration, Convert takes care of everything and you can get started with the cloud within seconds. Let us take a look at how you would go about doing th just that. So I choose to select uh, add an IIS and of type local infrastructure and click OK. Now I'm asked to specify a name for my cloud. Let's say I name it my cloud. And in the next ser series of screens, I'm asked to specify which of my resources should be available to the cloud deployment. So currently I have three server pools running in my environment and I will dedicate one of them servers for my cloud deployment. And when networking side, I'm asked which of my predefined corporate networks I would like to make available to the cloud. So let's say the SaaS network I want to make available. Then I'm asked to select which of my VLAN ID pools should be available to the cloud deployment. The VLAN ID pool would be used to create the new private networks for the virtual data centers in your environment. And then I'm choose to select a public IP pool for the cloud deployment as well. What will happen then, whenever a virtual machine needs a public IP, it will be assigned from this public IP pool. In my demo environment, I, of course I have one of each, so I'm selecting the default options. But in reality, you can have many different choices here. Then I'm asked to select which templates I would like to make available as part of the service catalog for this cloud deployment. The networking service in Convert Enterprise Cloud handles all of the networking configuration and networking traffic. So it ensures that the networks that you've declared should be isolated, isolated from one another. If any VMs are assigned a public IP, that they're accessible via the internet, all of that is handled by the Convert Networking Service. Here I have specified the primary server to run a networking service on, and you can also specify a backup server to be used for that purpose as well. Now as I click Save, I will see that my infrastructure as a service my cloud has been added successfully. Isn't it amazing how quickly you could convert part of your existing virtualized infrastructure into a private cloud de deployment? And this is all it took. Now you're ready to provision virtual data centers and you know, start using your cloud. Now let's take a look at the virtual data centers. Conveniently, I have one virtual data center already created, and IT 
data center that happens to be running on Amazon EC2. On this virtual data center page, in the summary section, I see the total quota that's been allocated to me and then how much is currently being used by this virtual data center. On the right hand side here, you see the performance statistics for the top five virtual machines in this virtual data center. Granted, in my demo environment, the virtual machines are not very highly utilized, so the CPU utilization line is very, very flat. But of course, you would imagine that in your real environment, you would have nice graphs of CPU utilization that you could monitor. One great thing to note here is remember, these virtual machines are running on the public cloud infrastructure in Amazon EC2. But here in Convert Enterprise Cloud, you see all of the detailed information in the same way as you would for the virtual machines running locally. Similarly, we present all of the detailed configuration information for the virtual data center, including information about security groups, key pairs, public IPs, etc. Let us take a look at the actions that you could perform on the virtual data center. Some of them include managing public IPs, key pairs, security groups, storage, and adding in the virtual data center. Let us look at how I would go about managing public IPs. What I can do, I can request a public IP from a public IP pool from one of the Amazon uh, regions. And what this does, it assigns a public IP to be used in my virtual data center. Now, as I select this public IP, I can attach it to one of the virtual machines in the virtual data center. So here I have two virtual machines running, East01 and West01. And I'll attach this public IP to the E01 virtual machine. As I click attach, um, now I will soon get it. I have gotten a confirmation that the public IP has been attached. And now my, that is all it took to make my virtual machine accessible via the internet. I can also see details about each of the virtual machines running in my environment. So let's say I click on one of these, you get the same level of detail. Again, this is running in Amazon and you get the same level of detail as you would with the local instances. So I see detailed information about this instance, CPU utilization, as well as detailed configuration information about you know some of the configuration parameters, templates information, networking. All of this is available for you to view and analyze. And then I see the templates that are available as part of this virtual data center. Now that we've taken a look at one of the existing virtual data centers, uh, let us take a look at how you would go about provisioning a new virtual data center. So let's provision this virtual data center on my local infrastructure, um, the MyCloud that we have created. So we'll click OK, and let's say there is a development lab a development manager that has asked me to provision some resources for his development lab. So I'll create a virtual data center and then I need to select which of the things that are available in my cloud, which of the resources such as service offerings, networks, uh, quarters should be available to this virtual data center. So in this case I'll make the CentOS and the RHEL templates uh, service offerings available to this virtual data center. By default, Convert Enterprise Cloud creates a default isolated network for each virtual data center to assign to the virtual machines. In addition, you have the flexibility to allow the virtual data center administrators to create their own private networks and spread those out as they wish across their deployment. So for my development lab, I'd like to give them that flexibility as well. And then optionally, I can also give them access to one of my corporate networks so they can put their virtual machines on it as well. And I'll keep, I'll allow them to access the SaaS network that I have here. The next step is assigning the quota to the virtual data center. So let's say I want this virtual data center to at most have five, five running virtual machines, 10 provisioned. I'll assign some memory quota, virtual CPUs, storage and then I'll allow them to create at most two private networks and use at most two public IPs. The last step is assigning which users will have pro privileges on this virtual data center. You can add one of the existing Convert users that you already have or you can create new users right from within this menu. So let's say I want to create a new user for the development manager. Um, it, it, let's say Joe Joe Doe, um, 
and then I will create a password uh, uh, Joe's email phone number and then convert comes with two prepackaged roles for the cloud users one is the operator and one is the user the operator has the ability to do all the operations in the self-service console such as provisioning virtual machines um, you know creating templates all of the uh, creating new private networks if you've allowed them to do so and the user is more of a view on the VM administrator roles so they can start stop um, virtual machines but can't really do much or, uh, more than that so we assign development manager operator role and click save at this point I click OK and this creates the virtual data center now I see that the virtual data center has been successfully created and it appears here under the virtual data centers tab the development lab virtual data center so now I can see I can see that you know of course it doesn't have any virtual machines yet but we can see the quota that we've allocated and we can see the information about the networks that we have assigned to this virtual data center now let us take a look at my cloud the infrastructure as a service that we have created here I can now see that I have created one virtual data center it currently has no virtual machines but I can see details about the templates and server pools that are used to hold, host this cloud deployment similarly on this right hand side I can track the usage of my IIS resources so I can see how many computing resources I have in total how many have been so far allocated to the virtualized data centers and how many are being used by one or more of my virtual data centers this is a quick and convenient way to see you know am I about to run out of resources or am I over provisioning and do I need to assign extra capacity the main benefit of using Convert Enterprise Cloud is that you're managing virtualized infrastructure side by side with your cloud infrastructure so you can keep reallocating resources and reshuffling as your business demands change. Now one last thing that I'd like to show you is to show you what the self-service console looks for the virtual data center users. So let's log out of this console and log in as the development manager user that we just created and see what the self-service console looks like. So we are logged in as the development manager into the self-service user console and as you can see there is a similar concept here in the navigator but all I can see is my virtual data center which is the development lab. On the overview page I can see immediately how much quota I have been allocated and how much I'm using which is really nothing because I haven't provisioned any virtual machines and then if I had virtual machines I would be able to monitor the CPU and memory utilization and performance of those virtual machines as well as see details about virtual machines and networking I also can see in the template library the set of the service offerings that are available to me I don't currently have any custom templates that I've created but I can see the predefined service offerings, the RHEL 6 and CentOS PV install that we've made available to this virtual data center during the data center creation process. Now let's take a look at how we would go about provisioning a new virtual machine. So we say provision and give it a name, let's say VM1. We're asked to select a template, let's say RHEL 6. And the template comes with predefined memory and virtual CPU parameters that I can customize because I've been allowed to do so as an operator. And then I can choose to put this virtual machine on one of the predefined networks that I've been given access to, the SAS network, or on one of my private networks. And now I just have one that has been predefined for me, which is the default network. Alternatively, I, in addition, I can also put the virtual machine on one of the public IPs that um, I have requested. And then I can see storage information with the list of volumes that are associated with this virtual machine. Now I click Save and I can see the virtual machine task has been submitted, provision virtual machine. And in a few seconds, we will see that the virtual machine has been provisioned. So let us just give it a little bit, uh, just a little bit of time and see when it's going to complete. Okay, now we see the task has been has succeeded and now the virtual machine appears under the virtual machines tab 
and I can see all of the information about this virtual machine, including summary information, CPU utilization, obviously, is just, it's still down and it was just provisioned, so it doesn't have that yet, and then detailed configuration information about this virtual machine. So you can see how easy it is for the self-service uh, user to provision their virtual machine without having any visibility into the underlying infrastructure that this virtual machine is running on. One last thing to note is that you can see this console still has the Converture logo on it. This is fully customizable. You can choose to put your own logo or anything else into the cloud user console if you choose to do so. Well, this concludes our demo. Thank you very much for your time, and I'll be back with some more demos in the future.